In this uh, segment, we'll talk about the next part of CNS, that is spinal cord. Spinal cord is also known as myelon. Let us first talk about few basic things about the spinal cord and then we'll come to the structure. It is about 45 centimeters in length in males and slightly shorter, about 43 centimeters long in case of females, adult males and adult females. The weight, it weighs about 35 grams approximately. This is its approximate weight. So length is slightly variable between males and females and the mass or the weight is about 35 grams. Location, the region where it is located, it actually passes through the vertebral canal which is also known as neural canal. So these vertebrae which are placed over one another, the, the spinal cord goes through them like through this vertebrae like this. So each vertebra has this canal in the middle and the spinal cord actually runs through this. So it runs through the vertebral or neural canal. So this is its location. Protection. Now it is protected by two things. One, the vertebral column because it is running through that canal. So it is surrounded by the bony part of the vertebra and it is also protected by meninges. Protected by meninges. The same meninges which we talked about in case of brain. So there are same three. If we go from inside out, the inner is pia mater. Then outside pia mater would be, so if we make it a little thicker, outside pia mater is the middle one, that is arachnoid matter. So this is arachnoid matter. And the outermost is dura matter. So the same three meninges are there. This is dura matter. Now, this is inside this part is the spinal cord. This is the tissue which we are talking about. And outside is this bone. This is the vertebra. That means here there is an additional space which is known as epidural space. Epidural space. We talked about this when we were talking of meninges in case of brain. Rest everything is same. This is, this is known as subdural space. And this one is known as the subarachnoid space. Now this is an additional space here, that, sorry, space, that is the epidural space. And this epidural space is filled with adipose tissue. Adipose tissue. So this is an additional layer which is there in spinal cord. This is not present in or around the brain. So this is one difference. So protection, there are two, one. The meninges, extra space is there, rest everything is same. This one is filled with uh, cerebrospinal fluid and all, everything is same. But there is an additional space and this space is between the bone of the vertebra and the dura matter, which is known as epidural space. And the other protection is the bone of the vertebral column. So protection is also there. Now, structurally, when we talk of the spinal cord starts from the part when the brain stem emerges from the skull. So from the skull uh, through the opening, uh, foramen magnum, when it comes out from that point. Or in other words, we can say it starts or originate, starts from 
the first cervical cervical vertebra and first cervical vertebra is atlas two the first lumbar vertebra so this is how it runs the diameter of spinal cord is not uniform it has two swellings so if we draw this this is the complete spinal cord and there are two regions where there is slight swelling one region is cervical and then the next region is the lumbar region so it has two bulges or there are two places where its diameter is not uniform so this is cervical one region that is the place where it starts from and it ends in lumbar one region this ending part in the lumbar one region is known as this just where it ends the swelling where it ends is known as conus medullaris and then it extends up to the last vertebra that is in the coccyx region in the form of a strand which is non nervous so this extension is non nervous and it is known as phylum or phylum terminal terminal or phylum terminal or phylum terminal now these are the two swellings that we have drawn this is called the cervical swelling and this is known as the lumbar swelling the complete spinal cord is divided into 31 segments 31 segments and how are these 31 segments they are in correspondence to the vertebrae so there are cervical region from cervical region there are a because as we said they are in correspondence to vertebral column so vertebrae there are cervical vertebrae which are seven but there are eight spinal nerves which are going to come out then thoracic region 12 thoracic vertebrae and 12 nerves or 12 parts which are in that region then lumbar five sacral region again five and in the coccyx region because it's a small part of the vertebral column in coccyx region only one so if we total this then it comes to 31 segments of the spinal cord and they are in correspondence to vertebral column only difference is there are seven cervical vertebrae but there are eight segments of spinal cord now from the spinal cord when the nerves arise these nerves they come out of the backbone region between the vertebrae to understand this suppose we make these vertebrae here suppose this is a vertebra cut this is another vertebra this is another vertebra so the nerves are going to come out between the vertebrae as we said it is going through the vertebral column like this so between the two vertebrae from here the nerve fiber is going to emerge so the nerve fiber comes out like this from here a pair then from this region again a pair from here again a pair so this is how the fibers come out of the vertebral column now in this lower region because the nervous part of the spinal cord terminates here in the lumbar 1 region by the end of lumbar 1 vertebra this nervous part ends so how are the nerves going to come out because this part that is the phylum terminal is the non nervous part so if we draw again these vertebrae here to understand how these nerves are going to come out they emerge in their corresponding region the nerve is going to start from here let me use another color it is going to start from the nervous part end of the nervous part that is conus medullaris but it is going to emerge from here again it is going to come from 
the same part and emerge from here. So, all these fibers are going to originate from this part that is conus medullaris but they emerge from their corresponding areas. And because of these branching, this terminal part, it looks like a ponytail and that is why this region, this one, this part is known as corda equina. Corda name or term is given for the tail region or terminal region and equina term is derived from equus which is the horse. So this is how these nerve fibers they emerge from the corresponding region. Origin is the nervous part. So structurally it's a long tube or a structure which runs through the vertebral column Protected by meninges as well as the vertebral column, there are two swellings, one in cervical, one in the lumbar region. And all these nerves, they arise from the nervous part of the spinal cord. When we see this section, we understand that there are two depressions, one on dorsal side, one on the ventral side. And in spinal cord, gray matter is inner and white matter is outside. This part will be clear when we see the section. So let us now draw the transverse section of a spinal cord. 